believe it or not, CNN still has not called the race between Elliot Engel and Jamal Bowman. Now, if you watched my program last week, we announced that Jamal Bowman not just defeated Elliot Engel. I mean, he beat him in a landslide, right? So I think it's pretty obvious that Jamal Bowman will emerge victorious, even if we don't have all of the precincts reporting yet. You can kind of project who's going to win based on what we see currently, but CNN still hasn't made the call yet. Now, you can argue that, you know, they're data people. They're just a little bit more conservative than you and I. I'm going to argue that it's because they're haters. <laughs> and the reason why I say this is because CNN is obviously biased against progressives and the left, and they love the Democratic Party establishment and the establishment more broadly speaking. But you see their contempt for the left in their interviews. So Jamal Bowman was interviewed by Aaron Burnett, a CNN anchor who has very vocally been against the left. She called Bernie Sanders a hypocrite before. And, you know, you can kind of see in her tone, in the way that she like talks about the policies that Jamal Bowman is in favor of, that she disapproves. She doesn't like him. So take a look, because what he does here is just brilliantly dismantle the CNN propaganda that we always see. So she's going to try to stop him from promoting, you know, defund the police or propagandize it by using Jim Clyburn's argument against it. Watch how brilliantly he is in easily dismantling this bullshit. So, so you came in here and you fought hard and, you know, if you're the winner here, this is not the way a lot of people thought it was going to go, to state the obvious. Governor Cuomo endorsed Congressman Engel. Uh, Senate Minority Leader Schumer endorsed him. Uh, the House Speaker Pelosi endorsed him. Uh, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, the current chair of the House Democratic Caucus, senior member of the Congressional Black Caucus. What do you say to them tonight? <laughs> Well, you know, again, the people have spoken. You know, we worked really hard from the very beginning of the campaign to build deep, authentic relationships with people across the district, across race, across class, across religion, across age. Uh, again, from Co-op City to Eden Wall to Ryan, New York. Uh, so we did that work very urgently in the very beginning. We had hundreds of volunteers uh, working with our campaign, knocking doors, uh, leafletting, making phone calls. Uh, so those relationships matter, and we, we've always felt confident that those relationships would translate into votes. Uh, even when the pandemic hit, we were able to pivot pretty efficiently to a virtual campaign, and uh, it led us to the point where we're up now uh, by, by many, many points. So when it comes to uh, calls for racial justice and the protests, which also have defined so much of this race, you have joined those calling to defund the police. So I wanted to play for you part of a conversation I had with a Democratic congressman and House Majority Leader Jim, uh, Whip Jim Clyburn. He wants police reform, but, but here's what he told me about how he views the defund movement. Here he is. History is instructive. I was there along with John Lewis back in the 60s in the early 70s, we saw how our movement got hijacked. We did a lot back then that led to where we are today. We would have done even more if we had not got overtaken by sloganary, burn, baby, burn, uh, took off in this country. Be careful that we don't get hijacked this time like we got the last time. What do you think when you when you hear his thoughts? Well, defunding the police is about a reallocation of resources. It's about a demilitarization of the police and investing in public health, investing in housing, investing in jobs, investing in education and health care and environmental justice, uh, investing in mental health supports. You know, 50 percent of those killed by the police suffer from some mental or physical disability. Uh, what that means is we need to take a different approach, not a lethal approach. Uh, defunding mm -hmm. the p police also means uh, the end of sending military equipment uh, to local police forces that they then right. use uh, on people within the community. So it's not defunding as a rallying cry, but what it means is it's a reallocation of resources mm -hmm. toward public health and other areas that we've neglected for quite some time. So it sounds like what you're saying is you understand his point. Sometimes words can come to, to mean something to people that may not actually be what you're saying. I mean, you're saying reallocate. You're not saying you don't want police, I, I'm presuming, right? You're not saying you don't want police providing safety. You want them to be trained differently and behave differently, right, as, as, as opposed to going away? Well, there's a role for police, but I push back on the notion that, you know, police and safety have to go hand in hand.
Mm, uh, when okay. we talk about safety, the number one thing that makes me safety and sec safe, safe and secure is making sure that I have food security, housing security. So Jamal Bowman is a very smart person, and I think that he knows like what she's trying to do. He just lets, you know, this bias roll off of his shoulders. And that's really what you've got to do, right? Uh, she basically asks him at first how he thinks he won in spite of the entire establishment coming out against him. Now, you know, for me, because I'm petty, I would be inclined to like laugh and say because they suck. But I mean, he just, you know, he very clearly said because the people that sp have spoken and he's correct there. Uh, but where we really get into the bias is when she tries to use the credibility of Jim Clyburn to try to, you know, push back against this notion that we should defund the police. Now, I shouldn't have to say this, but as a news anchor, your job is to inform your viewers. So you shouldn't be confused about what defund the police means. If you are, do your research, do a better job because you get paid millions of dollars, right? Uh, but she tries to make it seem as if defund the police isn't what it means, what it seems like. Maybe it's more nefarious. Uh, maybe it means get rid of the police entirely so that way if someone's breaking into your home, you have no one to call. So I mean, she's trying to be alarmist here, but Jamal Bowman just, he brilliantly had an answer to that. So he said, defunding the police is about a reallocation of resources. It's about a demilitarization of the police and investing in public health, investing in housing, investing in jobs, investing in education, healthcare, and environmental justice, investing in mental health supports. 50% of those killed by the police suffer from some mental or physical disability. What that means is we need to take a different approach, not a lethal approach. Defunding the police means an end to sending military equipment to local police forces that they then used for people within the community so defunding is a rallying cry but what it means is a reallocation of resources so i mean by now you should know this if you're confused by what it means and uh you're a cnn anchor getting paid millions of dollars per year you should know what defund the police means by now you can't put all of what he said on a bumper sticker so defund the police is easy it implies reallocating resources right it's easier to just say defund the police. Uh, but she tried to make it seem as if, well, you know, defund the police. Maybe this means get rid of the police entirely. And sure, it is the case that abolitionists do want to defund the police. But she's overcomplicating this because she's trying to obscure what this means, right? But it, it's not that difficult. And Jamal Bowman broke it down beautifully. We have been over-policing cities in America now for too long right? When we see this issue of homelessness, what is the response from cities? Oh, let's just throw more police at the scene. Let's over-police the homeless away. But that doesn't work. You respond to issues that cities have appropriately, not with a one-size-fits-all solution. Rather than responding to homeless people and the crisis of homelessness with more policing, rather than criminalizing homelessness, you respond with housing. Rather than responding to mental health crises with police, you respond with healthcare, mental health care specifically. So what he's saying is we have to rethink the way that we address all of humanity's issues, right? Up until now, it's just been police. Let's police this issue. If we police drugs, if we police crime, all of this is going to lead to a better outcome. But that has been a proven failure. So when people say defund the police, they're saying rather than giving all of the money that the city has to police, we have to actually do a better job at tackling the root causes of these issues. People aren't going to be more secure if we have more police in the streets. When it comes to people of color, they actually feel less secure, more vulnerable because of the way that they are racially profiled by police officers. And he also explained how police and safety don't go hand in hand. And that makes sense because think about this. You're not more secure if you don't have food security or if you, you know, have housing insecurity. So what he's trying to do is disaggregate this notion of security and police, right? We need housing security, healthcare security. We need to stop thinking as policing as the appropriate response to everything in society and actually do better, right? Improve conditions in cities, right? And I mean, it's not necessarily something that should be confusing for a CNN host. Like I get, like you get a pass if you're an average person and you don't necessarily know what people mean by defund the police. But if you are in the world of politics, if you've done any coverage of this as a news anchor, don't pretend 
as if, you know, you don't know what it means. Maybe she's playing devil's advocate because she wants Jamal Bowman to explain. But I mean, what it seems like if I'm watching this and I'm an average viewer is that, wow, if this smart CNN anchor can't get it, then this must be too confusing. Maybe these protesters are wrong. Maybe their messaging is off. That's the takeaway. And, you know, it's not conspiratorial to say that given the coverage that mainstream media did when, you know, Occupy hit. I think they had a very clear message. But what did the media do? Oh, well, I don't know what they're calling for. I don't know what these protesters want. They don't really seem to have a cohesive message. I mean, the message was clear. Resources need to be redistributed in this country. The 99% have nothing and the 1% have everything. Now, I think that defund the police is much more concise and politically palatable because it's one specific policy. Um, I mean, there, there's multiple policies linked to that, but I mean, you could really tie it to one thing, whereas with redistributing resources is more complex. But I mean, you, you saw what they did. They lied about what Occupy was fighting for. So, I mean, when it comes to these types of protests, you know, the, the media can try to co-opt the narratives and usually they're successful at that. But I do feel a little bit encouraged knowing that they haven't really been able to do that at this point. We see, you know, people who don't necessarily agree with the overall message of protests like D. Ray McKesson and this eight can't wait, you know, who was attempting to reduce police brutality by 72% or whatever, but what about the other 28%? No police brutality is what we're aiming for. So they, you know, they're still on message to fund the police and they haven't wavered from this message. And I think that's so encouraging. And it's nice to see people like Jamal Bowman actually get elected so he can bolster their message, bring that message to Congress and explain it very eloquently as he did on CNN to people in Congress who either don't get it or don't want to get it. But I mean, with someone like him in Congress, you can't pretend like you don't know when he's there to educate you. So, I mean, this was a phenomenal clip and it shows you that, uh, you know, when he gets to Congress, he's going to be a very effective legislator.